Hi everyone, it's very good to see you again. So for today's episode, I thought that it might be a good idea, as I'm going to be moving out of this flat in the next few weeks, to really enjoy the kitchen for the last time and bake some cookies together. Now this is not going to be a demo about how to make these cookies. Instead, I really wanted it to feel like just having a conversation with friends, like you are here with me in the kitchen, we're having some tea together and I'm baking you some cookies while we have a chat. So that is what this video is going to be today. I've never made these cookies before. I'm going to be following a recipe on my laptop. So I'm not sure how they're going to turn out. If they turn out really well, perfect. But if they don't, at least we've had a nice time together here today. So whatever happens, it will all be fine. These are lemon and pistachio cookies, two of my favorite ingredients. And I thought they'd be perfect for the summer and for the season. So let's get started. I'm very excited to be doing this with you and I hope that you will enjoy. Okay, so to begin, preheat the oven to 350 and line a baking sheet with parchment paper or a silicon baking mat. I've done that in a small bowl, combine granulated sugar and lemon zest, rubbing together with your fingers. Uh -huh. Okay, so I have some granulated sugar here and some lemon zest, but as you know, I hate getting my hands in the bowl and mixing things, so I'm just going to not bother doing that with my fingers, and I'm going to use a spoon instead. I think that will be fine not going to be getting my hands in here and doing that so let's get this started i'm just gonna get this around and try to mix them together as best as possible until it becomes fragrant that's what it says here so i'm doing that so yes i have had quite a busy few weeks um as you know last week i was on holiday which was much needed and really fun. I really enjoyed going away on holiday and having a little bit of a break. Um, and since I got back here to Edinburgh, the, we the weather has been pretty amazing. The whole time I've lived in Scotland, I used to live here back in 2015 as well. And I must say that this is the first time that I've really experienced such good weather in Edinburgh, especially for a long spell. So it's kind of made me a little bit, not lazy, but not wanting to do what I have to do, in other words, pack my flat, start moving out. Instead, I've wanted to just make the most of the weather and really enjoy this time. So last weekend, I went to the beach, about 30 minutes drive away. We have a lovely area called East Lothian and they have lots of beautiful beaches there. So I spent the whole weekend at the beach, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, just enjoying laying on the beach, swimming in the sea, even though it was very cold. It was refreshing and wonderful. And I'd really been craving to just to swim in open water, so that was really good. And then I also had a few delicious lunches, long ones that lasted for a few hours with maybe a bottle of wine or two. So it's been a very relaxing time, exactly what I needed. I had a holiday away and then I came back to the wonderful weather. So I feel restored and back to, ready to start doing the hard work. So I'm probably gonna regret the fact that I put it off a little bit, but also I do tend to work quite well under pressure. So I know that it's all gonna be fine. So I think that we have got this nicely mixed together. It is fragrant. I can smell the lemon, which is perfect. And it's really mixed well with the sugar. So that is that. Let's move on to the next step. Uh, add this lemon sugar to the bowl of a stand mixer fitted with a paddle attachment. Add butter to the bowl and beat until combined and fluffy. Okay, so again, I'm not going to be following the instructions. I do have a stand mixer but I really cannot be bothered with having to get it out and wash up. So I'm just going to do this the old fashioned way and put the butter into here and do it with my hands. I think that will be the best thing to do. So yeah, add the... Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to add this butter to this mix and stir it together until light and fluffy. Now this is probably not the best thing to do. I should be following the instructions. But one, there used to be a time when we didn't have electric mixers, so 
and I'm sure people got on very well, so let's just do it this way. So I'll just start by pressing this into the butter sugar mix so that we can get it combined and then I'll whisk it through with my uh, hand whisk. Okay, so I began beating this together. It is coming together actually, better than I expected it to. I also think that it's better to do it this way for filming purposes so that you can actually hear what I'm saying and you can actually see what's going on in the big stand mixer. Can't really see what's going on in the bowl. Here I can show you more easily and it's not so noisy, so that is better. And as I'm doing this, it's really hurting my arms because I've recently started working out with a new personal trainer about four weeks ago. Now, usually when I go to the gym, I do mostly cardio. That's what I've been doing for the last five years. But I really wanted to start lifting weights. Now, I don't want to be like a bodybuilder. Probably never could be anyway, but I just know that when you lift weights, you really do tone up and lean down. So that is what I wanted to do. But I was all, always a little bit uh, shy to do that at my gym because I've never done it before. And I guess it can be a little intimidating when people, a lot of people are around and you feel like you're being watched and judged. So I thought that I would get a new trainer who would teach me how to do those things. And it is going very well. But uh, after a week holiday, going back on Monday, I'm sore and a little bit stiff. So... My body's getting used to it and definitely going through the motions. But uh, yeah, it's exciting and I think it's going very well. I'm enjoying that. It's always good to keep fit and work out, but now my arms are feeling it. Okay, I think this is pretty much ready. It is light and fluffy like I would usually get when I use a, a stand mixer. So I'm pretty happy with that. Let's move on to the next thing. This is going to the side. And it says, in a separate mixing bowl, whisk together flour, baking powder, and salt. Okay, so here is my flour. Just gonna get this teaspoon. I'm gonna add in some baking powder. Probably about a teaspoon of that, a level teaspoon. And I'm also gonna add in some bicarb. Now, it doesn't call for that in the recipe, but whenever I make cookies, I always think that it helps. So I'm gonna add some of that in too. Okay, what else? Flour, baking powder, and salt. Okay, a little bit of salt. Now it says, with the mixer on low speed, it gradually add the flour mixture until a soft dough forms. Right, okay, so I think what I'm gonna do, if this is a bigger bowl, I'll add this to the flour mixture instead, and we'll do it that way. This is probably not the best way to do this, but I'm sure it will work out. And at least I'm here to be the mad scientist and make these experiments happen so that you don't have to make the mistakes if it doesn't go work out. So as some of you may know, I am gonna be launching my own scented candle very soon. Actually, in my last video, I did ask for recommendations to help me with choosing a name for the candle. So thank you to everybody who did send me a recommendation. I read through all of them. There's some really good ones. Uh, you've very much inspired me. So this candle is gonna be based around the English garden. Um, I had the scent created by a very excellent perfumer in the Cotswolds. So it's kind of gonna be based around a Cotswold garden and it really does smell wonderful. This week I've been having lots of meetings with my packaging designers and the branding people. So the packaging, the box, the candle itself, the vessel that it goes into, those ideas are all coming together. I think it won't be long now until it will be ready. So it's very exciting. I can't wait to share that with you and it really is a dream come true because to have my own fragrance, my own candle was something that I wanted about five years ago when I thought about starting my own business. That was kind of the, the, uh, the, the aim, the dream for what I wanted to have. So for that to be happening now is just pretty crazy and just like a dream come true. Okay, I've just realized that I haven't put in the almond extract and the vanilla extract. I'm too busy chatting away. 
So let's put those in and now I'm going to try and mix all this together. Hopefully this will work and we'll have a dough. Now, I've just been battling with this dough for the last five minutes, wondering why it isn't coming together. And I've realized that I've forgotten to add in the eggs. So let's add those in. This is the funniest thing ever. I've never done this kind of cooking before. I usually practice and read the recipe a million times. I thought that I would just be very casual and do this like this, but it's not working out. Okay, but at least we're having fun. So here we go. Let's hope that this really does work. Otherwise, we're just going to be ending up just having a cup of tea. No cookies. Probably better for the waistline, but cookies are always a delicious thing. One of my favorite foods. I could eat like a whole box of cookies in one go. <clears throat> ah, this is working. This is working. Okay, we have our dough. It's done. Let's get this onto a cookie sheet, baking sheet, and then we'll get them into the oven and start making our icing. So to do this, I'm just going to be using an ice cream scoop and I'll just level it off with this knife and then we'll scoop them onto the sheet. I think that will be the best way to do this. So that we get nice, even cookies. There we go. It looks like ice cream. Yummy. Now, a lot of people have been messaging me to ask whether I've actually found a new place to live. And I'm afraid to say that I have not. I'm still looking. I've looked at three places. The first one, I got uh, beat by somebody else. So they have managed to get that flat, which is fine. It wasn't meant to be. And then the other two, uh, I'm still waiting. I've put in applications, I'm still waiting to hear, and I've got something else to see next week. So hopefully it will be sorted out very soon. Uh, I do want to get this done now. I'm ready to go and uh, give my notice in. So it's time for me to go. So what is it like with COVID where you are? Is life starting to get back to normal a little bit more or is it still pretty crazy with lockdowns and things? Here in Scotland, we are mm, pretty much open up. Uh, all of the cafes, restaurants are open. The bars and the clubs are open till 10, a, 10 p.m. but they don't play any music. Um, so it's not much fun. I really would love to go out and have a fun time but it's not ready yet. And I'm also wanting to travel. I was hoping to be able to travel. I'm hoping to be able to travel to Dubai in October. It's one of my best friend's birthdays. And I do often spend her birthday there in Dubai, but it's all depending whether it's a nightmare to travel or not. If it's going to be lots of money in testing and stuff like that, then I'll have to leave it this year. But I'm really hoping that I'm able to go because it's one of my favorite things to do every October, go to Dubai, spend time with my friend, have her birthday and just see some other friends there too, because I made quite a lot of friends when I lived in Dubai. It's a real fun place. And especially because winter time is starting here in the UK. So there the weather is perfect. It's like summer weather. So it's always good to escape in the winter and go there. So hopefully I'll be able to do that this year. What about you? Do you have any travel plans that you ha want to do? Things on the bucket list? So I've got to say, as I mentioned just before, I have started a new, with a new trainer. So I'm trying to be very strict with my diet. So I'm gonna have probably two or three of these cookies and then I'm gonna give the rest of them away to friends. What you can also do is freeze these cookies and just take them out in batches when you want. So I'm, I'm going to have 12. Uh, so if I have three and then give the rest away, that should be fine. But the dough seems to be quite nice. It's scooping easily. And I've just had a taste. It tastes really well. So hopefully they will be work. They will turn out pretty nice. 
Last one. Okay. So what we have to do now is just flatten them down with the bottom of a glass, it says. So I'm going to do that. Oh, yeah, that's fine. Sticking a little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> I've got no idea how some of these famous chefs do live cooking demos on TV. That to me would be my worst nightmare and something that I would never want to do. But hey, I'm not a chef, so maybe that's why. Actually, it's probably best just to use my fingers. Okay. So I'm gonna pop these into the oven for 12 minutes and then when they're done, we'll let them cool off and we'll put the icing on and the pistachio topping. So as you can see, the cookies are baked. I've just tried one to see how it tastes and to see the texture and consistency. And actually, they're not really like cookies. They're more like a scone, to be honest. Even though they've got this quite hard base, they're a little bit crispy on the outside, but inside they're very soft, more like a cake uh, texture than a biscuit or a cookie. But I'm sure they'll still be very delicious. So now I'm going to get on with making this icing. So I've got some icing sugar or powdered or confectioner sugar, as you call it in the US, some freshly squeezed lemon juice. So I'm going to add this a little bit at a time and just whisk it through until we've got the right consistency. Now, I would like this to be quite white and thick. Otherwise, I know that when you try to ice the cookies, it can be very translucent, runny, uh, and I don't want that. I want it to be quite thick so that it stays firm and that we've got a nice glossy icing to go on top of the cookies. So actually, I'm just rubbing this, th uh, stirring this through, and I think this is pretty much the consistency that I was looking for. So I'm not going to be adding any more of the lemon juice in. This is perfect. And what I'm going to do is just take the cookies and dip them in and then sprinkle them with our pistachios, which I've crushed. So I've let these cookies cool for about 40 minutes before I've done this. They're completely cool and they're ready to be iced. Now, in terms of me moving house, it's something that I'm pretty skilled and experienced at because I've moved about 15 times. In the last 10 years, my ex-boyfriend was in business and that meant that we had to travel a lot. We traveled around the world, uh, often at, sh at short notice, and then he would have jobs in different countries, so we'd have to rent places from time to time. So I'm very used to moving house. It's just that I never enjoy the process of actually doing it. Some of the favorite places that I've lived, uh, I lived in a few different places in the Cotswolds, just whilst I was trying to figure out where I wanted to be. I started off in a little village called Blockley, which is near Morton in Marsh, which is one of, the most, one of the most picturesque places in the Cotswolds. And I really did enjoy living there, except it was a little bit too quiet. Um, we lived in a little country house, didn't really know anybody around, so it was a little bit lonely. Um, so I decided that we would move to more of a vibrant place and in the Cotswolds there is a little town, a Georgian spa town called Cheltenham, which is famous for horse racing. We lived there for a few years in a flat, pretty much like this flat but bigger, and uh, that was a very nice place to live. I enjoyed living there. More vibrant, more things to do, lots of bars, restaurants, and I made a few friends, so it was a lot better living there. But the Cotswolds in general is one of my favorite areas, as I talk about quite often. It's just so pretty, natural beauty, 
uh, lots of different things to see and do, shopping experiences that you don't usually see, and I don't mean in terms of fashion and clothing, more in terms of for the home, you get a lot of organic farms and they have beautiful gifts and flowers and stuff like that. Um, but to go shopping for clothes and designer clothing, especially you would need to go to London from the Cotswolds. But yes, it was a very nice place to live. I think that one day, maybe in the next 10 years when I've made a bit more money and been a bit more successful, it would be nice to have a house in Edinburgh, maybe a small flat and also a country house in the Cotswolds. Again, nothing too huge, but somewhere that I can escape to from time to time. That would be the dream. So I think we should get, this is nice and smooth. I think we should start to ice these cookies. So let's do that. Okay. So I've just put a little baking piece of baking paper under here so we can catch all of the excess drippage. I'm literally just going to drip this into here, drop this into here, give it a bit of a swirl <laughs> and then let it drip off. And I think, yeah, nice. And then I'm going to sprinkle on top some of the pistachio. looks so pretty with the green and white. That's why I love pistachios. You know how they've got that little pinkiness to them as well. Very pretty. And I'm just going to do that for all of them. Actually, what I'm going to do is let them just lay there with the icing on for a little bit before adding the pistachio because I think that is making them drip a little bit more than they should. So let them just have the icing. Now, I'm a huge fan of icing. I love it. Some people don't like it. My sister hates anything like this. But for me, the, be the more icing, the better. So yes, these were supposed to be cookies, but actually I'm going to call them scones. Lemon and pistachio scones. Start putting some of this icing, uh, pistachio on the top of the icing. So as you can see, these really were very simple. Didn't, wasn't any hard work really involved. No technical work, just a simple baking that you can do and you end up with this pretty nice result. But yes, I will miss this kitchen for sure. It's quite a big kitchen. I posted a photograph on Instagram stories the other day of this kitchen from an angle that you don't usually see and a lot of people were surprised at how big this kitchen is because I only film from this way and even though I've explained it quite a few times people think that I'm still cooking and baking in my living room which I think is pretty funny okay we're beginning to run out of icing we've got two left I think that will be fine Okay. And I think we are pretty much done. These look delicious. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that you've enjoyed this little episode. For me, it was so much fun to bake and have a conversation with you. I must say it's the most relaxed I've been in the kitchen in a long time, so thank you. I will see you next week, but until then, have a really great weekend and a wonderful week ahead. Bye-bye.